All right, back to another live mail time, mail call, live unboxing. See if anybody wants to join us today as I have a really, really crazy unboxing for you. It's just a single box, a single box that I'm unboxing today. Got someone in here. And uh, yeah, it's a good day at work. It's a hot day at work, but good day nonetheless. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to wait a couple of minutes here to see if anybody wants to join in. And then uh, we'll get right into the unboxing of some big pens. These are some big, massive, oversized pens, so it should be pretty cool. Do, 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 do. Uh, let's see here. My uh, overlay collection is growing a little bit more. I'm actually going to have another one coming. Another one of these overlay pens will be coming soon. But this is special. This is from Scott Now. And if you don't know who Scott Now is, he's uh, probably one of the best collections of Watermans anywhere. Um, he was one of the founders of the Philadelphia Pen Show. So pretty cool. Uh, I don't know who's joined in, but thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to get into unboxing this crazy thing. I've already kind of just opened it up, but I have not seen the pens yet. Inside this little gold box are two massive pens. So let's get right into it. Let's just go for it. You guys are going to see it before I'm going to see it. All right, I've got three of you guys in here. I'm unboxing two massive pens. Let's see what we got. Number one. This is a Waterman's 58. Big red ripple oversized pen. Got a little unscrewed there. So we will check out this Waterman's 58. For a reason. There we go. And wrapped Ooh, in a napkin is the Biggest oversized pen Waterman ever made. Wow, this thing is crazy big. There you go, guys. Waterman 20. There you go, Waterman 20. Hello, fall Constant Constantinople. Welcome. There you go, guys. The two biggest oversized pens the Waterman Found Pen Company ever made. Waterman 20. Ah, things, things got a massive nib on it. Oh, that's right. It's a it's on a tight. <laughs> Look at the size of this nib. Give you an idea. Um, here is a Mont Blanc 149 number nine nib. And there it is next to the Waterman number 10 nib. Spoon feed thing is crazy massive. But I'm curious to see, like, watch if you post this thing, look how big that pen is. Hi, Fernando. Hey, Sean. Yeah, this thing is insane. Let's see it compared to... Pretty sure it's bigger than maybe not. It might not be bigger than this pen. Honestly, it's it's actually not as big as I had figured it was. All right, this is the Namiki Chink and Dragon. 
Oh yeah, no, they're about the same size. So this is maybe a little bit taller. But yeah, it's the about the same size as a Namiki dragon or Namiki uh, Ch uh, Namiki uh, Emperor. So there we go. Caps are about the same size. Let's compare the nib. Oh, the nib's way bigger on the not way bigger, but it's it's a lot bigger on the Waterman number ten. That's cool. Yeah. So this is, uh, yeah, let's see. Um, oh, yeah. It's like super flexible too. And this is an eyedropper filled pen as well. Just like the, the Namiki Emperor. So you just unscrew this whole thing. There's the feed, the super long feed on the back, and then you fill that thing up with ink. So that's wild. Crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And next to it, we'll uh, we'll compare. So the Waterman's number eight nib next to the Waterman's number 10 nib. What a monster. And this is a big pen too, but it looks so tiny next to that. I mean, they're about the same length, but that is insane. Uh, my number, oh, that's interesting. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, it's um, Red Ripple. I need to get a, uh, a, I bought a sack for it. I have to um, refurb this one, uh, but it has a manifold nib on it. So no flex whatsoever made for salespeople to use carbon copy paper, but really cool. Um, yeah, so uh, as far as history goes, uh, Fernando, um, so number 58, uh, they made this. This one is a the five stands for a lever filler, and the eight is the nib size. Um, and they made these from uh, – at least the lever filling ones from about 1915 until uh, the late 1920s. The number 20, so it is a uh, cone cap eyedropper pen. So it would be, that's what the one, uh, normally like a Waterman's 12 is a cone cap eyedropper filled pen. Um, so a 12 would be, the one for that, the two is the nib size, a number two. Since this is a number 10 size nib, rather than calling it a 10, they just took the 10 and the 10 for the nib size and made it a 20. So that's why it's called a 20. If this was like a 22, 22 is a taper cap pen with a number two size nib. So uh, that's why the name, the name is a little weird. It doesn't really necessarily follow the same. Um, numbering scheme but yeah it's a black chased hard rubber pen this one is from the mid mid 1920s probably around like 1925 just based off of the imprint on the barrel there are no um, patent dates or anything like that and the cap the clip on the cap says clip cap they stopped doing that in 1928 so yeah, but really nice, clean imprints. Um, these are really, really rare. Um, and Scott gave me a, a really good price on it. So I had to go with it, had to get one. Um, curious to see if this will actually fit in my pen case. That's going to be a trick. Let's get it. Let's see. Oh, it does. That's nice. It is super massive compared to these other pens granted these are like tiny versions of the same thing basically and here's a waterman's 12 vp which is a vest pocket pen so they're really small and it has the wrong cap but you can get an idea Ooh, they're tiny and then here's a number two size nib next to a number 10 
crazy. I mean, it's more than an inch long. But super rad. I thought this I thought this was a beast of a nib and then you just put it next to that and you're like no that is crazy super duper awesome super thankful to Scott reaching out to me about these these are just so rare and I mean they're more common in the black chase hard rubber um, where they're less common is the uh, the ripple or the modeled or um, we're talking, you get this pen in sterling silver and it's like a $20,000 pen. I did not pay that much for this. This is not worth $20,000, but it is still very rare. And I will probably be making a video about, uh, about this. Um, sometime soon I'll make a video do a little writing sample with it but super crazy cool and then the 58 i need to restore it first i am very very pleased scott wanted to send them out to me first uh to check out before i bought them but i was impatient so i just bought them already but that is let me actually compare these real fast to so here is the 58 again here is a 56 give you a size comparison on those two 56 is already an oversized pen And then, you know, and then you get to the, the 20. It's so cool. It makes the 56 look like a junior <laughs> size pen. Super cool. Yeah, I'm stoked. Uh, the only other thing that I got in the mail today was some was a dental tool. That's right. I bought a dental tool. Why? To help with restoring pens. So There you go. Got a dental tool. Actually, I thought I bought two of them, so I have to check into that. I'm pretty sure I bought two of them, but here's one. Unless there's another one in there. Nope, there's only one in that packaging. All right, that's different. Well, I mean, I can make a right uh, a um, I can make a video with the different nib sizes. It's just depending on the on the grind too, like. What if this one is more broad than this one? Um, these nibs are really rare. Like a number eight size nib is really rare. A number 10 size nib is crazy rare. Um, what I should do is I need to make a video comparison between the different colored nibs for the number seven pens. But yeah. Oh, hey, David. Yes, this is the number 20. Would you look at the size of that pen? David, here is the 20 and here is a 56. <laughs> Crazy. Again, a 20. 
of 56. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! Watch, watch that kind of language on here, man. It's a, uh, it's, it's a uh, more like a stick of dynamite, right? It's crazy big. Yeah, I mean that's substantial. If you guys are, well, yeah, we'll leave it to a mystery of what was paid for what, but. Uh, yeah, super crazy. David, you will definitely get to try this out right with it when I see you in San Francisco next month. Crazy that we're already coming up on that. Um, if anybody's going to the San Francisco Pen Show, I will be there. David Garcia will be there. Drew Brown and uh, Brian Goulet are going to be there. They booked their tickets already. They booked their, their flight and uh, got their hotel room, which is going to be really cool. It's going to be a real party over there. Um, today at work, uh, this has nothing to do with pens, but today at work, I made some magic for some friends uh, over at the Haunted Mansion, and they gifted me this. Like, will you look at the size of this patch? This is a patch for, like, the back of a, like, jean jacket or vest or whatever. But, yeah, it's crazy. I had to uh, roll this up and stick it in my coat pocket all day um but it's already it's already going to drew brown i've been talking to him about it today i was like would you like this and he's like you don't have to give that to me i was like i'm not a crazy star wars fan so here you can have that so i also got that and a challenge coin as well pretty cool i get stuff like this all the time at work so that's awesome. Yeah, good stuff, guys. Like, I don't have too much for you today. Um, it was a very, very hot day at Disneyland. Happy to be home. Just probably got to try really hard not to get a drink or anything. I'm trying to lose weight before I go to San Francisco. I used my waterman as a wand at the magic show. Uh, don't really know what you mean by magic show. At the Haunted Mansion, I always bring a fountain pen with me. Uh, today was Mont Blanc 149 day. Uh, not for any particular reason. It has ink in it. That's why I brought it with me to work today. But yeah, here's the Mont Blanc 149 next to a waterman's 58. Mont Blanc 149. Next to the Waterman's 20. Big boy. Last purchase till the show. Famous last words, David. Famous last words. Um, I uh, paid. I'll, I'll show you. Know, I'll show you. I have my phone right here. Um, I bought these today. A display case, plus trays. And another display case plus trays. So they're coming from Canada. He put them all in one box. They're small enough that they're like countertop sized or whatever. Um, but they're hard to come by. The smaller they are, the more valuable they are for the most part, the more they'll like kind of go for just because they are small and people can keep them in their homes. The larger the display case, the less space. Like people don't have space to put in a giant cabinet inside their house um, dedicated to their fountain pen collection. So um, 
I'm really, really thankful. Uh, Brian Johnstone uh, from uh, British Columbia, really, really thankful. He just reached out to me and was like, hey, are you interested in these? Um, I want you to have them. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna display my pens in them. Uh, someday I want to have my, like an entire room in my house kind of turn into a old Waterman's dealership, like old Waterman's like dealer showroom. That's the dream. Uh, I can just about fill those two display cases with the pens I have. Um, I'm basically at uh, I have 51 Watermans in my collection. And then as far as like modern pens go, I have less than 10 now. I'm, I really dwindled things down. This um, this weekend, I'm going to make a video about like what's what's going on with my pen collection, that sort of thing. Like the mid to 2020. Hey, here's uh, here's the state of the collection. Um, when I started 2020, I had like 15 modern pens, and right now I'm probably chilling at like six or seven. Uh, really, the focus has gone towards antique, and what I've really kind of figured out is. Um, the difference between modern collectors and antique collectors, well, I haven't figured it out yet. The difference between modern and antique collectors is, um, you know, you're all about getting like the, not the latest and greatest, but doing a lot of different inks and different ink colors and stuff like that. I'm more, hey, I got like three good blue inks and some black ink and then everything else. Um, I'm really not using my Watermans as much as I thought I was going to be using them. Um, it's more about collecting and keeping them pristine and keeping them really nice. And then I have like my mom and stuff like that, that I can use. There's a couple like beater watermans that I, I use often. Um, but everything else, I just kind of want to keep perfect and then, you know, let them make them last another hundred years or so. I have not heard back about, about the poster. Um, it's supposed to be done sometime in September, David. Um, and I have to pay for the other half of the work getting done on it. But September sometime is when I should be getting um, or hearing news. But it's about three months for the conservation for that Waterman's um, lever filling pen poster. So hopefully soon. Again, David, here is that compared to that. They're about the same size, except, and I was very surprised by this. It's a smaller nib on the Namiki. Crazy. Look at that spoon feed nib. That, that's crazy. That's wild. The nib is ever so slightly. misaligned on there, but we'll try it out see how it goes. It is a chonk. <laughs> Let's post it for fun. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's com it's comically large. I was curious. It's probably like 10 inches long or so. Here's a posted Mont Blanc 149 next to this pen to hold it super far away. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, it came today. So I just unboxed it at the beginning of this video. 
um, just came in today. In fact, Scott is uh, messaging me saying, hey, is everything okay? How did, how's it going? It's so funny, like seeing this, uh, this is the 58, seeing this up close, it's, it feels normal actually just compared to this because this thing is so much bigger. Because when I, um, yeah, when I reviewed this pen with uh, Greg, not reviewed, I just made a little video with it. I was like, man, this thing's crazy. And then it's like, never mind. <laughs> now I have two, well, three massive oversized pens in my collection with the Namiki and this and this. And then I also have my like 356s, which are also technically oversized pens. They just don't feel like it next to these other two. These 56s just look dinky. They look like 52s compared to these. But yeah, I don't have too much for you guys today. Um, I just wanted to check in. I haven't done one of these live videos in a while. Um, I've just been so swamped with work and stuff like that. Uh, and yeah, just kind of getting reacquainted with being back here. I have lost 15 pounds since moving home. So that's good. That's a great thing. I, uh, when I was living in that house, house sitting, uh, I was just like way overeating. I wasn't getting enough exercise. So yeah, it's, it's good to be home. Um, good things coming. Well, I don't have any modern pens coming. Do I? No, I gotta, I gotta make some new videos this weekend. Um, Uh, once again, I'm going to do my state of the collection kind of mid-year state of the collection video. I'm not going to go into the Waterman stuff because there's too many of them. Uh, when I started, when I, in February, when I did the San Francisco, sorry, the Los Angeles Pen Show with David, I had 12 Waterman fountain pens and now I have 51 Waterman fountain pens. So, yeah. Yeah, I've gone crazy. So, um, but yeah, cool. Anybody else have any other questions? Oh, David, by the way, I bought like some tools to be able to do some, um, to be able to repair some pens myself. I bought some sacks. So I have, uh, like some replacement sacks to be able to do it myself. I have shellac. Um, I bought some forceps. So I'm going to have some forceps to be able to like really like this guy. probably have to like heat this up and then remove the section. Um, but this needs a new sack in it. It's all dried up in there, but, uh, oh yeah. Wait. <laughs> so, um, I bought the tools to be able to do it myself and, uh, yeah, man, this thing's dope. So cool. Once again, thank you, Scott. Scott now for uh, selling me these pens. Super rad. Uh, David, remember, we're going to do a live stream. Oops, sorry. We're going to do a live stream from our hotel room or something like that um, when we are at the show. So, I, so we can kind of check in and talk about what's going on uh, with the show. Uh, Troy won't be in it because he says he, uh, oh no, I, I look like a serial killer. Okay, cool. <laughs> but um, we'll do the uh, live stream. I'm going to see if I can get Drew Brown. Get Drew Brown, maybe uh, get Drew Brown or, or Brian Goulet, see if they'll be on camera for like a hot second. That'd be super rad. Um, I'm super excited to meet those guys in person. Really, no offense to Brian, but like more excited to meet Drew Brown. Um, I got him a pen, so he's gonna he's gonna flip when he sees that pen because 
his idea of vintage pens is like 1990. I mean, this is from the 1990s. Um, that's his oldest pen. He has a pen from like 1995. So I'm going to upgrade him to a pen from 1917. That'll be my antique upgrade for him. And what's nice is it's something that's he can ink up and he can use and he can write with and he won't like the, with these like you don't really need to be that afraid um of them melting or anything like that like you're he is your friend with ebonite you have to i have to use a blow dryer to get the sections apart and you just like stick a blow dryer in front of these things and it'll actually do some good for you so uh the 20 is a they never made this in a lever filling pen so this is a eyedropper a big ass eyedropper and the 58 is a lever oh drew's pen i got him a 52 so he's gonna have a 52 i don't think he's watching any of these videos so no like i, I wish drew brown watched my videos that'd be cool but um, it's cool. He's got a whole life and he's got to film all those pen cast videos with, with Brian. But yeah, no, I got him a, he has a 52 with the original box with the um, original receipt and stuff like that. Not receipt, uh, like how to pamphlet the instructions inside. So I got that from um, David Nishimura. So Good stuff. Uh, there's that next to a Waterman's pink. Number seven pink. Like this pen is so big. Let's see. This pen is so big. I wonder if I can fit another pen just inside the barrel. Oh yeah. Let's see this. This pen is so big. Well, I can do that with this. Let's see here. Oh, wrong one. Wrong tray. Oh, yeah. For sure, I can take this. This is a uh, Waterman's 12 and a half. It's the secretary pen. Thin little pen. Look how thin. Thin and narrow. Secretary pen. About 1908. <laughs> I can put the whole pen just inside the barrel of this one. <laughs> That's silly. That's just. There you go. Waterman 20 can also uh, work as a fountain pen holder for another fountain pen. I wonder if the, oh, it gets, it gets narrower at the bottom, but this is a, another 12 and a half, but this one is a four 12 and a half. It is certainly silver, tiny little secretary pen. This one belonged to um, Gary Lair, uh, the late Gary Lair, who wrote a lot of the Waterman's books that I have here one who wrote co-wrote this book this was one of his pens in his collection and actually yesterday's pen was this one that came in this is called an 0314 and it is a slip cap number four size nib it has one of the earliest chase patterns on it this is a uh, gold filled and this is the actual pen oh and i mean the imprint on it is gorgeous the imprint on it it's gonna be hard to see on camera but it's flawless on the cap there this is the exact pen that is on page 11 in this book so we got a page 11 there is the 0314 that is this it's not this, I mean, it's the same model. This is the exact pen that is in this book, which is really, really crazy. Super cool, I'm proud to own it. This is like the first, I mean, first catalog pen I have in my 
collection. So super cool. Honored to own this. And it looks, you know, it looks pretty pretty dang nice. This case is this case is primo right now. So I have a 0322 taper cap, 0314. Um, this is a 12 SF, so it's a um, sleeve filler pen, gold filled. This is a 514, which is a 14 karat gold solid, 14 karat gold pen, uh, 412 and a half. So it's a small number 12. Um, this is a 412 in sterling silver. And these are two number 12s or 412s in fine silver. So 99.9% uh, .9 silver. This is a 452. So it's a number 52 in sterling silver in the Gothic pattern. This is a number 15 in the Cardinal, Cardinal Red. It looks bright orange, but it's red, red hard rubber. This one is crazy. This one cost me a lot of money. Um, this one costs less than the number 20, but it's super crazy rare. And this is probably from 19, oh, between like 1905, 1908. Super hard to come by. Um, it has like some condition issues. It has a, a sterling clip that was added later, um, but it and it's been repaired. But I mean... It was crazy rare. Awesome nib. Super flexible nib. And that's it. I mean, I have a uh, number five in here. That cool flared cap. I bought this from the original, the estate of the original owner with the original box and everything. And um, the lever was damaged. So I had to get a lever. And my, uh, my friend Matt Greenberger helped me replace that. And then there's number 12 in here for now. But soon I'm going to have another fine silver uh number 12 coming but cool like that's just one of my trays um this 60 pen case from uh toyoka craft is very full right now my modern pens are uh they're a little overcrowded in here um you can see the spot from way back when my 52x uh, leaked all over the place but right now it's a little overcrowded. I have um, uh, my Mont Blanc 149, Mont Blanc 146, my Pilot Custom 823, uh, my Pilot Cut Vanishing Point down here. Um, I have the Ritma, which I'm probably going to give away at the next uh, Orange County Pen Hangout. Monteverdi Ritma. I have my Lamy, uh, Lamy 2000. <laughs> I'll like never get rid of the Lamy 2000. I love that thing so much. Um, I have some, I have my two Kavecos, my Kaveco Sport, uh, Ale Sport with the 14 karat gold nib, and then my uh, Kaveco Nomos collaboration. Um, these are all inked up, and then this is a no-name brand, like 112-year-old sleeve filler that I got from my friend Matt Greenberger. And then I have some pencils. I have this old-school Mickey Mouse pencil. Um, I actually owned this old school Mickey Mouse pencil, but it was missing its finial. So I went online and I bought this. Uh, it like came from Romania and it's a different version of that same pencil. So it's a different pencil. I was thinking I was going to replace the parts on it and I never got to. I have a ballpoint pen in here, but it's from Smoke Tree Ranch, which is a uh, place where Walt Disney owned a house. I don't really collect Disney stuff, but it just so happened I find, found, you know, got it here. I have a LeBeouf pencil in here, a Victorian pencil, and then I have this pencil as well. So I'm not huge into pencils, but I do have a few. And I also have some more Waterman pencils as well. Um, they're like tiny little pencils though. I don't really use them, but they're cool. And if it's Waterman, I'm probably gonna collect it. And then as far as modern goes, I have this. <laughs> it's like baseball bat. I mean, this thing's crazy. You, I don't recommend posting it, but I'm going to post it just for your entertainment. Look at this thing. It's huge. Hey, Charles. 
yeah, I haven't uh, have not been on on here in a while, but I'm here talking about my new little toys. Here's some good watermen. They you can find them on eBay. And they're they're pretty cheap. And then as far as restoration goes, like it's pretty easy to do yourself. Um, but if you don't want to do it yourself, like there's so many people out there, like um, Penn Hospital that can do it. Um, Greg Sheik, the antique digger, can restore your pen for you. But yeah, don't go and buy a twenty because <laughs> they're expensive. But they're cool, they're rare, they're strange, they're big. Waterman's doesn't even fit in it. Oh, fits that way. It's not bad. But yeah, guys. Thanks for stopping by, hanging out. Let's see. If you need nib work, check out Greg Minuskin. Um, it's expensive though. Nib work is, uh, especially if it's like like a warp nib or nibs that have issues, um, it's pretty expensive as far as getting nib work done. But, uh, or if you, you know, if you can find a nib grinder out by you, like, maybe you don't need a nib grinder, but like this one, like this 20, as I'm looking at it, like I might have to send this into Greg just to get it kind of like strained out, not strained out, but it just sounds a little clicky, but I mean, how often am I, am I actually going to write with this thing? It's just massive. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think that's all I need on this one, too, is just to be kind of realigned. Which might be able to do myself. Is it definitely, definitely clicky, but super crazy, massive, cool. Stoked on it. Hey guys, well, it's getting, it's not, you know, it's not super late or anything yet, but I have to go walk my dog. My dog needs to go out. Poor little guy. He's been inside all day. So I'm going to go walk my dog, get ready for dinner, that sort of thing. But thanks for hanging out, guys. Good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Well, good to see you too, David. I'm sure I'll be talking to you in a little bit. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks for stopping by and hanging out. Um, little audience today, but you know, um, I'm really excited for the San Francisco Pen Show next month. It's going to be a blast. Um, me and my pal Troy are going to road trip up there and then I'm rooming with David. So it's going to be great. Um, but anyways, you guys. Thanks for stopping by. Um, check out my Instagram for more. And uh, I'll see you guys all real soon. All right. Peace.